he's a pepper, she's a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? <laughs> That's an old commercial for a Dr. Pepper ad. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to see how I make this Dr. Pepper poke cake, stay tuned. Hi everyone, the Baking Diva here. So good to see all of you. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you enjoy it and you want to come back. And don't forget to hit that red subscribe and the little bell next to it. And you'll get a notification the next time I have a video up and you won't miss it. Well, today is episode three of my series. The Perfect Pokes. That's right, the perfect pokes. Now, do all of you know what a poke cake is? Oh, it's so easy. You bake your cake in a nine by 13 pan, and after you've baked it, you poke holes in it, and depending on what version you're making, you spread some yummy goodness that seeps into those holes, and ice it and oh it's so good so today is a special one i'm making the dr pepper poke cake that's right and i know that there is an awfully lot of dr pepper fans out there i didn't have a can so I'll sh i'm gonna use what i need out of this bottle but it's all good so what do you say we get started? Let's get started. <laughs> so this cake is amazing. You don't need any milk. You don't need any eggs. And you don't need any oil. Isn't that amazing? But what you do need is you need a box of chocolate cake mix. It could be any brand you like. I'm using Pillsbury could be Duncan Hines or whatever you prefer, as long as it's chocolate. And see behind me, I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, he's a pepper, she's a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? I know, I'm cray cray. Everybody that tunes into my channel knows I'm a little cray cray, but you can have fun and bake too. So I'm gonna dump this entire package of my dry cake mix into my electric mixer. Okay, now I preheated my oven to 350 degrees. You are going to need a nine by 13 inch baking pan. I'm going to spray it. I always like to use my nonstick spray with the flour in it, but just make sure you coat the bottom, even if it is nonstick. So let me do that now. Okay. Perfect. Put that aside and I'll put this aside. Okay, now to our cake mix, we are going to add 12 ounces. Now they come in cans, 12 ounce cans. So you can use a 12 ounce can or if you have a bigger bottle, just measure 12 ounces of Dr. Pepper soda. So I have a measuring cup here. And let me put in 12 ounces of my Dr. Pepper. Here we go. Ooh, look at that foam and that sizzle. It's funny because I'm not a soda drinker. I never drink soda. I actually don't drink anything that's carbonated. Just don't like it. It doesn't agree with me. I drink like lemon water, um, iced tea, those kind of things. But um, my grandsons are obsessed with Dr. Pepper. So anyway, I'm going to put 12 ounces of Dr. Pepper right in with this cake mix. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna mix it all together until it's nice and combined. So let me raise my bowl and set this up. It's nice and smooth and it's combined. I should tell you too, if you don't have a chocolate cake mix, you can use a devil's food, but I prefer the chocolate. Okay, I think that's pretty well combined. So, 
I'm going to, whoopsie, oh, I'm going to take my beater off, move my mixer over, bring my pan over, and you all know me by now. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Am I going to lick the beater? Of course I am. What do you think? And plus, there's not even any eggs in this. So why not? Mmm. Good. Mmm. Want some? <laughs> All right. Let me put that down over here. All right. So we're going to take our batter and we're going to put it in our 9 by 13 prepared pan. Do any of you like Dr. Pepper? I think it's my daughter's favorite. My grandson Lucas is obsessed with it, although I try not to let him drink too much of it because he can get carried away. Okay, now we're gonna put this in the oven and we're going to bake it. So let me just smooth this out here. And, um, okay. Okay, let me get the corners done, get it all in there. Okay, very good. Now I like to give it a little bit of a tap, tap, tap. So don't go away. Stay tuned. I'll be back when the cake comes out of the oven. Okay, I took the cake out of the oven. I baked it for 25 minutes. So that's what I'm gonna suggest you do. Don't pay attention to what's on the box because this is not a real high cake. So 25 minutes um, is good. Now, before your cake cools, while it's still warm to the touch, you should take the end of a wooden spoon. Now, my wooden spoon happens to be a different shape, so I can't use it today. I'm gonna to use this, but I'll be getting one. You use the handle of a wooden spoon, and what we're going to do is poke, 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 holes in the cake. Do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about, that's what it's all about. I know I'm cray cray. <laughs> but anyway, you're going to make quite a few rows. And uh, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe about six pokes in each row. So I'll start doing that now. Um, sometimes when the cakes are a little bit higher and all, I might do eight pokes, but I'll leave that up to you. The reason I poke while it's still slightly warm is because once this gets cold, you know, it forms like a little bit of a crust on the top of the cake gets a little bit messy. So let me start poking. This is the fun part. Get your kids into the kitchen to help you. So let me see. Poke it down. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Don't know if you can see that, but that's what you're gonna do. And then you're gonna go right alongside it, leave a little space, and you're gonna do another row of pokes. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. Can you see that? And so forth and so on. So let me finish poking it, and then I'll be back and show you what we do next. Okay, so that should just about do it. You get the idea of it, okay? Now, one thing I didn't tell you earlier was, poke cakes always come out better when you put them in the refrigerator. In fact, after you make a poke cake, you need to store it in the refrigerator. And I have found that a day or two, after you make these cakes and they sit in the refrigerator, they taste even better. So, what I'm going to do now is I happen to have a jar of Smucker's Hot Fudge. It doesn't have to be Smucker's, but you do need hot fudge. And you want to liquefy it. Mm -hmm. So I put it in the microwave. Um, take the lid off, and this even tells you. You can microwave it for, I forget how long, but 45 seconds. But if it's not liquefied, just, you know, keep doing it until it gets a little more liquid. And now I'm going to pour this back and forth 
over the holes on the cake because I want some of this fudge to seep into those holes. They're not going to be filled to the top, but you get the idea. So let me start doing this. You can make it even thinner if you want, but I'm just going to, as you can see, just go slowly over the top, back and forth, till that fudge starts to fill in some of those holes. You see how I'm doing it? Doesn't matter if it's messy or not. The idea is you can just run it. You can do it with a spoon if you want. Let me try the spoon and see how it works. You can just take it out with a spoon. Spoon probably works a little bit better. And just go back and forth over those holes like this with your smooth, and sort of liquefied hot fudge. The idea is to try to get as much as you can into those holes you poked in, because this is a poke cake. <laughs> the poke cakes have been very popular in my home. The last one I made, oh, put the link for you in the description box, was the firecracker cake that I said you could make for Memorial Day or 4th of July, let me tell you, I didn't have much self-control with that cake. I thought it was delicious. Oh my gosh, so delicious. Yes, this makes, works much better with a spoon. And this is, I believe, um, almost a 12 ounce uh, jar of the hot fudge. So I'm just gonna smooth it over all these holes and try to get as much fudge in them as I can doesn't have to be perfect, no rhyme or reason. All righty, look at this. Mm. For those of you that are Dr. Pepper lovers, I think you're gonna enjoy this. And just the fact that you don't need any eggs in this or milk or oil, that's pretty good right there. So we have enough here in the jar to keep going on and on. I'll hold it up for you. I'm going back and forth over the rows with the spoon and it's going into the holes. Works good that way. These poke cakes are so moist. Really delicious. Okay, there we go. Almost done. Like I said, the holes are not gonna be filled to the top, but by doing this, you get a lot of that yummy hot fudge in those holes. I imagine when you cut this cake, oh boy. <laughs> so delicious. And poke cakes are so easy to make. I mean, most of them, not all, but most of them do start out with a boxed cake mix. So how hard could it possibly be? You're making your boxed cake mix, right? You're poking your holes the fun part. You're filling your holes with something and it all depends on, you know, what type of poke cake you're making. And then you're going to make an icing or a topping for it. You're going to keep it in the refrigerator. I say overnight. I like to make my poke cakes the night before or the day before and keep them in the refrigerator overnight. They taste so much better the next day. So that would be my big suggestion to you. Make it the day before you need it. And that I like too. In fact, you could even make it two days before you need it. But that's, that's really a great idea because if you're having company or you're busy with other things, you don't have to worry about quick whipping up that cake the same day. You can make it a couple of days before. And I made a big mess. And I even did my nails for Memorial Day with little flags on them. And now my hands are messy, but that's okay. I will wash them. <laughs> All right, and you can even take your spatula if you want. And I'm just gonna go right gently over the holes with that fudge and more of it will even go in. Oh yeah, this looks delicious. Oh yes. Oh yes. Mm -mm -mm. So you see what I did here? All right. Now, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for 
not long, and then I'm going to make my topping and show you how we top this and how we decorate it. So stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. Um, I only left this in the refrigerator for about 10-15 minutes. Um, oh, what am I doing? I have a guest with me. Say hi to my subscribers. Hi. I bet you haven't seen my grandson Lucas in a while. He used to be in all my videos with me and then he got so busy, right? With sports and school and everything that he dissed me. Did you diss me? Oh. <laughs> no. And now he's here today and he said, oh, can I come in the video, Grandma? And I said, yay! So we're gonna make a frosting, a topping for this Dr. Pepper cake. And Lucas is gonna be my assistant and I'm going to tell you what we're going to put in it, and he's going to put everything in the mixer. Now, you don't have to use a stand mixer if you don't want. You can use a hand mixer. So the first thing we're going to put in there is one and a half cups of powdered sugar. So here, Lucas, here's one cup. Try not to make it go all over the place. <laughs> you can put them over there when you're done. And here's the other half a cup. Okay. Now, Lucas is going to put in there two sticks of unsalted butter softened. Now, I soften this, and I know Lucas doesn't like to get his hands dirty, right, Lucas? <laughs> so, I have a dish towel here. Here's a spoon to scoop, to scoop it in. So, we're going to put the two sticks of softened unsalted butter in. You can put your stuff over here. <laughs> okay, sorry. This is so delicious. Wait till you see how we're going to decorate this. Now he's going to put in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You might want to hold that over the yeah. bowl. Yeah, okay. He used to bake with me all the time. He's in so many of my videos. But then he dropped out for a while, but now he's back. Woohoo! All right, you can put the lid on that. And now we love, 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 love maraschino cherries. Oh, and I have a big jar of them here. But we need to have two tablespoons of the juice in there. So let me get you, let me see your spoons. Do you have a tablespoon over there? One tablespoon? Yeah, we're going to put two in. Is that a tablespoon or a teaspoon? Yeah. A TSP teaspoon. That's a teaspoon. We need a tablespoon. So let me go get them. Fun fact about cherries, they make you relax. You know, I asked him how he knew that. Because I just found that out recently. You know, cherries and especially like fresh cherries and all. Yeah, just hold it over the bowl and then we need two of those. And they supposedly make you relax. He knew it and I didn't even know it. Know it. And he's in fourth grade. Well, he'll be going into fifth grade soon. Okay. okay. Oh, it's dripping out the bottom there. One. Okay, we need another one. You need two. I did two. Oh, there's two in here? Yeah. Okay, we oh, have the I two. I need help. <laughs> you need help? All right, give me this. And up oh, here, use this on the bottom. Okay. And now we're going to put a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Here, let me have that. It calls for kosher salt. So we got that in there. All right, now Lucas is going to lift up the bowl. Over there, remember? See, you're forgetting. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> Woo! And turn it on. Whoopsie! <laughs> and turn it on, sort of, two or three. And we're going to get that all combined. Right, Lucas? <laughs> so we'll get it combined off camera, and we'll be back to show you what we do next after we get that all mixed up. So don't go away. Okay. <laughs> Lucas changed his shirt, but that's okay. What's look? Yeah. All right, we have this all blended. Look at that nice pink color for our Dr. Pepper. So you want to um, scoop this off the yes. beater for me into the bowl. And then we'll scoop the sides of the bowl down there. This cake is going to be so delicious. You're all going to love it. Wait to see how we decorate it. Mm. You want to lick that? No, thanks. I always... I'm not hungry. Well, they know that I always lick the beater. No. For always. chocolate cakes, I always do. You do it for chocolate cakes. I do it for everything. <laughs> okay. You don't have to get it all off. Just leave some for the baking diva. No. Yes. 
Unless they would be disappointed. They don't seem to like it because I always lick it. Okay, let me have that. Now you take your spatula and scrape down the sides of the bowl into the middle while I take a little taste of it. Grandma, you might be sleeping mm. at the city. Mmm, yummy. Mm. Grandma, you might fall asleep. <laughs> From the cherries? Yeah. Mmm. Keep mixing. Get it all in the middle. For those of you have, that haven't um, been following my videos, Lucas is 10 and he has been baking with me since he was yo high. <laughs> Four. Four. We're all younger than that. All right, let me see. Okay, thank you. So let me hold this up and show you if you can see it. It's a nice pink color and it's very creamy. Now, I'm going to spread this on top, but Lucas is going to do some of this special decorating. Can so I spread it? Well, let me just try it here because it's very thick. And we have that fudge on there. That's why I chill the fudge a little bit so it doesn't smear all over the place. Let me get my... Can I try? Um, well, you can, let me get it on and then you can spread it. I have to go in the drawer. I'm going to get my little spreading knife because we want to be able to cover the whole thing. Do you know which one to get, Lucas? Yeah. That one I always tell you not to use? Yeah. Because it's for my baking. Get it all out of there if you want to be able to cover the whole top of the cake. It's this. Right? Can you put this in the sink for me? Mm -hmm. Let me do that for a minute. Technical diff difficulties. <laughs> all right. So, Lucas is going. Where are you, Lucas? Right here. Right here. All right. Lucas is going to gently spread this. So, we don't want to get the fudge mixed in with it, but we want to cover the top of the cake. So, you think you can do that? Go very gently. You don't want to go down low. Don't get the fudge on it. You know what? Hold this flat. No, no, no. See, let me just show you. Hold it flat like that. If you do it like that, like a butter knife, it's going to, um, what do you call it? Want to do more? Just take your time. We'll be back as soon as Lucas finishes spreading the ice, icing on the cake. Okay, Lucas finished icing the top of the cake. I'll be honest with you. I made a single recipe for the icing. I don't know about you. But I like icing on top of these cakes, so I think the next time I'm going to double it. But I'll leave that up to you. Now what I like to do is, with this little, I guess they call them offset spatulas, I'm going to very lightly just score on top of this lines to make squares. And we're using maraschino cherries with stems. I'm going to pass these over to Lucas. And as I score, you can do that part. As I score the squares, he's going to place one of these delicious cherries inside each square. So let me just turn it this way first and start here very lightly. You're not cutting your cake. You're just making these little squares. So we have about 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, about 18 squares. Okay, look, you can get started. Put one, just shake the juice off a little. Put it with this one? In this, yeah, with the stem up in the center of each of these squares. Very good. Now, with these little chocolate sprinkles I have, they're not really sprinkles, they're shavings. When Lucas gets done with that, we're going to sprinkle these shavings all around it. And remember what I said this cake goes in your refrigerator. I would put it in the refrigerator overnight, serve it in the morning. It just tastes so much better when it chills. It's just all of those flavors seem to just, I don't know, meld together and uh, it gets more moist when it's in the refrigerator and it's just delicious. The flavors come out more. So see how easy this is? Good job, Lucas. Want me to help you on this side? No? 
He's got it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Lucas, I missed you. Not baking with me. He used to bake with me all the time. Now the teenagers, eh, they kind of gave up on it a little bit and I still have Lucas here. Maybe he's coming back. Ooh, ooh. Tell him in the comments that you missed him and then he'll read them and maybe he'll want to come back. <laughs> right, Lucas? Yeah, he said yes. He always had fun baking with me. Look at that, how cool. Oh, that has no stem. I'm going to have to eat it. Put one with a stem on there. <laughs> Gotta look nice. They have to all look good on there. Oh. I'll take a picture of that. All right. Almost done. I guess while he's doing this, I should tell you, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go down below and hit that red subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Yup. And make a comment. YouTube loves those thumbs up. They promote your channel that way. And um, if you hit that little gray bell, you'll get a notification. So I hope you come back because we're going to do episode four of the Perfect Pokes soon. All right, Lucas, that looks awesome. All right. Now, you see these little curls? Just gonna sprinkle a few of them like this. Look at this, Lucas. Chocolate curls over the top of the cake. I'll put a picture in for you, but still. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Who wouldn't love a Dr. Pepper poke cake with chocolate shavings and maraschino cherry? Oh, this looks good. All right, everyone, so we're gonna take a picture of this so we can put this masterpiece in for you. I'm gonna put plastic wrap over it, gonna put it in the refrigerator overnight, and tomorrow we're gonna do a taste testing. Oh, is this awesome or what? See if I can hold it up a little bit for you. I don't want the cherries to spill. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. So what do we say to everyone, Lucas? We say bye. I hope you enjoyed our video. We'll see you soon. Have a wonderful week. Now what do we say? Toodles. Toodles.